In programming, there are math symbols that we use to do mathematical functions. So we're going to look at the consistent ones. We'll look at division. And then we'll look at what are known as shorthand. So there are three consistent symbols used throughout different programming languages. And apparently I cannot spell consistent. It's ENT. So you learned something else today. The plus sign. Can I get this to be pink, please? Thank you. I can get all that to be pink. Cool. The plus sign stands for addition. So an example of this would be 5 equals 3 plus 2. Actually, I don't want to do that because you'll see why later. The minus sign is subtraction. So 3 equals you know, 7 minus 4. The asterisk, which is, again, the key above the 8, is for multiplication. That's his key. That's what you always want to use. If you use the letter X, it's just going to mean the letter X, and the program will not like it. So 36 is equal to 6 times 6. Pretty simple. These are the three consistent math symbols used throughout programming. Division is a little bit different for Visual Basic in the sense that with integers, there are three different things you can do. Doubles is pretty consistent. Let's first take a look at the symbols we're using. Over here to the left, you have the traditional forward slash, which you're used to with division. And that's the main one we use with doubles. Because remember, doubles have decimal point numbers, so we can just do traditional division with that. The backslash is used with integers and we'll take a look why. And then mod actually stands for remainder. So if I go ahead and put that in here. Mod is remainder. Stands for the term modular. So real quick, let's just take a quick look at division working with doubles. So if I do that, let's just take the number 4.6 and divide it by 2. That gives us the answer 2.3. You are very used to that. It is the traditional way to do that. And we don't have to worry about the remainder or rounding. That's the key part there. However, with integers, we do have to worry about things like rounding and remaining numbers because we're going to use throughout the course of programming, our different programs, all the numbers in different ways, which is why it's very important to understand how this works. So the first thing we're going to work with is the forward slash, which is what you're very used to seeing happen with division problems. If we use the forward slash when dividing integers, which Visual Basic tends to frown upon as far as the true definition of how integers work, it will round up your answer. So for example, go ahead and click here and it brings the text box way down there. So we'll try this again. There we go. If I am doing We'll do 7 divided by 3. It's going to give me the answer of 2 here because it's rounding down. Because in reality, it's 2.33, which in reality here is going to equal 2. And that's fine. If I, however, change that to 8 divided by 3, it, it, the true answer is 2.66, but because I'm using the forward slash, it's going to round up 
to 3. So we want to be careful with that because we don't always want our integers to round up like that. So I'm going to fix how this is formatted a little bit to give me a little bit more room. And there we go. This is kind of fun to watch too, right? Now the backslash sticks to the true definition of an integer by allowing us to round down no matter what. So if we do 7, then the backslash of 3 equals 2.33, and it still gives us 2. If we have the number 8, and we divide by 3, this is now going to do what an integer should do, and let us keep that too because we're not up to another whole number yet which is what we want to see happen so when you're dividing integers use the backslash and then mod means the remainder so if we do 7 mod 3 the remainder this goes back to elementary school now where before you learn decimal places you put the whole number off to the side 7 divided by 3 has a remainder of 1. And the math behind that, I'll do it off to the side here, is 6 divided by, or 7 divided by, yeah, I hand the wrong key, that's why. 7 divided by 3 equals 2.33, but that 0.33, there's one whole number left over, so it's 2, remainder 1, so it equals 1. Let's do it again for 8. 8 mod 3 equals 2. So now if we spread that out a little bit, 8 divided by 3 is going to equal 2, remainder 2. So our mod's going to equal 2. It is possible if we do 9 mod 3 that it's going to equal 0 because 9 divide by 3 equals 3 remainder 0 so our mod is going to be equal to 0 so mod is going to be used oftentimes uh, and we're going to do a couple programs especially that focus just on why we use that because we want to leave numbers left over so we can continue to recalculate them and continue through that process so one of the programs we're going to do to prove this is we're going to build a change calculator that converts money appropriately so we know the minimal amount of change we need to give a person. So, quick review here. The forward slash will round up for integers is what we always use to divide doubles. That's our traditional forward slash. If we're dividing integers to do what we want properly we need to use the backslash so that our number always rounds down and then we use mod to pull out the remaining information or whole numbers that are left over the final one I want to discuss is what's known as shorthand operations uh, these are operations that allow us to keep our code a little bit cleaner and write things quicker. What this allows us to do is oftentimes, especially if you think about a game where you are collecting objects like coins, or if you are a first person shooter game, think about the bullets in the game. This allows you, as a coder, to write that you're taking a value that already exists and either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing it by itself plus whatever additional information you have. So let's use an example here. I'm going to do an example of coins to keep it appropriate. So let's say my first value of coins is equal to 20. I start with 20 coins. And along the way, I'm going to collect a new bag of coins. So let's say my coins, I'm going to run into 50 new coins. So the way you know how to write that right now would be coins equals 
coins plus 50. So this would be saying that we would be taking the variable coins and we want to add once again onto it. So the current value right now is 20 plus 50 which now coins is going to equal 70. There's a shorthand way to do that though because if you have let's say you're making a huge game like Super Mario or Call of Duty you're gonna have the same situation in a ton of different places and rewriting the same variable name over and over and over again can get pretty monotonous so programmers came up with this tactic called shorthand so I'm going to show you the same example over here to the side again and this time I'm going to use, I'll use the yellow color for it. So we're going to say our coin still equals 20. And we run into a bag that's going to give us 50 coins. Now, instead of typing coins equals coins plus 50, we're just going to do coins plus equals 50 is still going to give us the math of 20 plus 50 because it's taking the original value of coins adding on the new value and it's still going to give us the same answer but look how much cleaner that is look how much quicker we were able to do that and you can do these same shorthand operations with all of the major symbols. So plus equals is addition, minus equals is subtraction, multiply equals is multiplication. Bring this down a little bit so we can keep typing here. The forward slash is division with the equal sign. You can also use though in Visual Basic here the backslash equals for integer division and someone asked can you use mod equals absolutely mod equals remainder so you can do that to keep adding those variable values onto variables so we're going to be encouraging this that instead of writing your variables like this if you do that I'm going to say okay clean it up so you're doing the shorthand version.